Hey, class. Welcome back. We're still doing World War One, and we are talking about trench warfare today, and that's the type of war that World War One was. It was a they built these big long trenches like for miles, right, on both sides, and they didn't want to give up ground. That was a way of not giving up ground to the enemy. And then they would get down in these in these trenches, and they would have a section of land where you did not go between. It was called no man's land, and that's what we're talking about today. It was the first type of war like this in in all the wars we've covered. So, uh, but that's what we're talking about. It's called trench warfare, and it's a type of fighting where both sides they build these deep trenches as a defense against the enemy. And they can stretch for many, many miles, and they did. They've got miles and miles still of these trenches in France and Belgium and all over where World War I was fought. So uh, the, the, it makes it nearly impossible for one side to advance. What is trench warfare? Trench warfare is a type of fighting where both sides build deep trenches as a defense against the enemy. These trenches can stretch for many miles and make it nearly impossible for one side to advance. So during World War I, the Western Front in France was, was fought using this trench warfare. And uh, like I said, like you look right here, this is this is the trenches. That this was trenches that they had built all across through here. By the end of 1914, both sides had built a series of trenches that went from the North Sea through Belgium and France. And uh, as a result, neither side could gain much ground for about three and a half years from October 14, uh, October 1914 to March 1918. So the, these trenches, it was a defense mechanism. It was defense. It was how the war was fought, though, just to keep them from from advancing and gaining more territory. What is it, Dini? During World War I, the Western Front in France was fought using trench warfare. By the end of 1914, both sides had built a series of trenches that went from the North Sea and through Belgium and France. As a result, neither side gained much ground for three and a half years, from October 1914 to March of 1918. All right, uh, so how were these trenches built? Well, they were dug by the soldiers, all right? Uh, sometimes soldiers dug the trenches straight into the ground. This method, method was called entrenching. It was fast, but it left the soldiers open to enemy fire while they were doing this, all right? Uh, sometimes they would build the trenches by extending a trench on one end, and this method was called sapping. And it was safer. It took a little bit longer to do. And... Uh, but the most secret way to build a trench was to make a tunnel and then remove the roof after you get through with the tunnel. And it was the hardest, but it was the safest method and was also the most difficult, like I said. So you had the three different methods, entrenching, sapping, and then tunneling. How were the trenches built? The trenches were dug by soldiers. Sometimes the soldiers just dug trenches straight into the ground. This method... This method was called entrenching. It was fast, but left the soldiers open to enemy fire while they were digging. Sometimes they would build the trenches by extending a trench on one end. This method was called sapping. It was safer, but took longer. The most secret way to build a trench was to make a tunnel, then remove the roof when the tunnel was complete. Tunneling was the safest, me safest method, but also the most difficult. All right, so they'd build these long trenches on both sides okay well you had a big area in between it that was called no man's land and this it was covered with barbed wire it had landmines the enemy trenches were generally about 50 to 250 yards apart so you didn't want to get out in no man's land because if you got out in no man's land you were going to get a either shot b step on a landmine c you were going to get caught out there and so, I mean, it was not a not good place to call to to be. So, our game, our review game that we play, is called No Man's Land. It's based off of trench warfare, where we get up there and and uh, if you get a wrong answer, you get called out of No Man's Land. So, uh, anyway, No Man's Land. It was not a safe place. You didn't want to be called out in it. No Man's Land. The land between two enemy trenches lines 
trench lines was called no man's land. This land was sometimes covered with barbed wire and landmines. The enemy trenches were generally around 50 to 250 yards apart. So what were these trenches like? All right, well, the, the typical trench, it was dug around 12 feet deep. So they went down 12 feet, 12 feet deep. That's about usually the average person is six foot or so, about the length of two, two people. I'm about six foot or something, something like that. So it'd be two me's for everybody, for all the students that know me. So some trenches were reinforced with wood beams or sandbags. Uh, the bottom of the trench was usually covered with wooden boards called duck boards. And the reason they put them down, they, they wanted to keep the soldiers' feet above water because when it rained, it came right into the trench and it would gain water and get and it would rise. And well, you didn't want your feet in the water because it because it, it caused all kinds of bad stuff for your feet and it was just nasty. Okay. So uh but that's that's how they were built. Something like this right here. They would look like this right here, and you put the trench board down. Uh, but when it would rain, it would come right into here and water would get water would build up. So you wanted to keep those feet dry and you want to keep them dry, not just your feet, because uh, they had to sleep in these trenches as well. So what were the trenches like? The typical trench was dug around 12 feet deep in the ground. There was often an embankment at the top of the trench and a barbed wire fence. Some trenches were re reinforced with wood beams or sandbags. The bottom of the trench was usually covered with wooden boards called duck boards. The duck boards were meant to keep the soldiers' feet above the water that would collect at the bottom of the trench. All right, so the trenches weren't dug in one long straight line, all right? As built as more of a system of trenches, so they were dug in like a zigzag pattern. All right, and there were many levels of the trenches along the lines, the uh, past dug so, so soldiers could travel between the levels. And uh, it would look something like this right here, what the, what the trenches would look like with someone in it and they're standing on that duck board, keep their feet out of the water. Trenches continued. The trenches weren't dug in one long straight line, but were built as more of a system of trenches. They were dug in a zigzag pattern, and there were many levels of trenches along the lines with paths dug so soldiers could travel between the levels. All right, so life in the trenches. What was it like for a soldier in the trenches? If you look right here, you see they're, they're standing in water right now. So uh, the soldiers, they, they rotated through three stages of the front. All right, they'd spend some time in the front line of the trenches, some time in the support trenches, and sometimes they would be spending resting because you can't just stay up all the time. You have to have rest. Uh, they almost always had some sort of job to do, whether it was repairing the trenches, guard duty, moving supplies, undergoing inspection, cleaning their weapons. They had something to do. And, that, that, and there was diseases in these trenches too, which we'll get to in, on the next slide here, uh, that you just I mean, it, it was, couldn't help it. It was a very unsanitary, very unclean trenches were life in the trenches soldiers generally rotated through three stages of the front they would spend some time in the front line trenches some time in the support trenches and some time resting they almost always had some sort of job to do whether it was repairing the trenches guard duty moving supplies undergoing inspections or cleaning their weapons all right so conditions in the trenches like i said they were not very good i want you to look at this they spit us for reason I'm moving myself over here. All right. They weren't nice, clean places. No, they were disgusting. All right. They were nasty. They had little pests in them. They had rats. They had uh, lice, right? You know, there were pests living in the trenches, right? Rats, lice. They had frogs. The rats were everywhere and they got into the soldiers' food and they ate just about everything, including the soldiers who were sleeping which is very nasty. You get a rat on you, start eating you when you're sleeping, all right? The lice were also a major problem. They made the soldiers itch, and they called it, caused a disease called trench fever. So these are some of the, the, the health conditions that they had living in these trenches. And they lived in here, remember, for three and a half years, three and a half, four years. Conditions in the trenches. The trenches were not nice, clean places. They were actually quite disgusting. 
There were all sorts of pests living in the trenches, including rats, lice, and frogs. The rats were everywhere and got into the soldiers' food and ate just about everything, including sleeping soldiers. The lice were also a major problem. They made the soldiers itch horribly and caused a disease called trench fever. All right, so the weather also contributed to rough conditions in the trench. Like I said, when it would rain, it would come down and just come down. And it, it would gather up the rain would. It caused, them, caused it to flood. It caused those trenches to get muddy. Mud could clog up your weapons and make it hard to move in battle. And the constant moisture could cause an infection called trench foot. And right here is an example of trench foot. Uh, well... And if that was untreated, it could become so bad that they had to amputate or cut off, cut off the soldiers' feet. You know, so and it, it was they had cold weather in there too. Soldiers often lost fingers or toes due to frostbite. Some died from exposure in the cold. So the trenches were not great places. All right, they were not good places at all. They were disgusting. They were cold. They were damp. All right, you you you. You had so many things to worry about. You could get trench foot. You had lice. All right. You had rats crawling around on you. I mean, it was just not a very good place. And, and But these soldiers had to stay in here because they were fighting in a war. Trench conditions continued. Weather also contributed to rough conditions in the trenches. Rain caused the trenches to flood and get muddy. Mud could clog up weapons and make it hard to move in battle. Also, the constant moisture could cause an infection called trench foot that, if untreated, could become so bad that a soldier's feet would have to be amputated. Cold weather was dangerous, too. Soldiers often lost fingers or toes to frostbite, and some died from exposure in the cold. All right. So our comprehension question. In what war was trench warfare the primary method of fighting? Was it A, World War I, B, the Civil War, or C, the American Revolution? It was A, World War I. This was the first time that they had had, that they did this. They built these trenches and had trench warfare with World War I. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Number two, what was the land between two enemy trenches called? Was it called A, the ditch? be the red hand or see no man's land you should all know the answer to this because we play this this review game every single week it is see no man's land ding 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 we have a winner number three around how deep was the typical trench was it a one foot b six feet or c 12 feet deep it was around 12 feet deep which is about two of me ding 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 we 12 have a winner. feet Number four, what animal or pest that lived in the trenches caused the, the disease trench fever? Was it A, rats, B, lice, or C, spiders? It was B, lice. Lice would get on you and they'd make you itch and it would cause a dis disease called trench fever. Ding, ding, ding. <coughs> we have a winner. Number five, what disease did many soldiers get from the constant moisture in the trenches, all the rain, all the buildup, it get in their boots and and uh, their feet would be in the water all the time. What was it called? Was it called a trench foot, b wrinkled foot, or c athlete's foot? It was called a trench foot. Ding ding ding! We have a winner. All right, that's all our comprehension questions for the day. We'll be back next time with more World War One stuff. I think we're talking about the, the sinking of the Lusitania. All right. I'll see you all then.